Hello wonderful people this is office 365 guide it's been a long time since i have posted any video but today i bring you another tutorial for microsoft graph even if you are a beginner or you have not worked with microsoft graph before this is a good starting point and by the end of this course you will feel very confident about using microsoft graph for getting uh, reports from office 365 or managing any data in any workload so stay tuned and let's begin with our tutorial for we begin our tutorial i want to make one request that uh, it takes a lot of effort to put these videos together so i would highly appreciate and will be thankful if you could just subscribe to my channel and share it with, share it with your colleagues also thank you so what is an api let's consider that we have an application app 1 and an application app 2 they are completely independent of each other but what if application 1 wants to access some information that is being protected by application 2 in this case what app 1 can do that it can use an api provided that application 2 is using that api in order to expose some information obviously there will be some authentication in place but for the uh, sake of this scenario let's consider that application 1 can call the api and that api in return can call uh, some endpoints and return the data to application 1 so in simplistic layman terms an api is used to exchange some information between two systems or application another example i could think of is that let's say that you walk up to a restaurant and you want to order something let's say that you want to order a pizza then what you will do you will call the waiter the waiter will get you the pizza for you so in our restaurant example the waiter is actually the api microsoft graph works in a similar fashion microsoft graph exposes rest apis using which we can connect to different cloud services that you see on the screen we can use powershell sdk or any other sdk for that matter or just use the uris using the rest method and interact with the workload of our choice now what you can extract using microsoft graph depends upon what has been exposed by microsoft Let's talk about how to use Microsoft Graph API. Now Microsoft Graph exposes some REST APIs and libraries to access the data and it provides or it uses one endpoint, right? It just uses one endpoint to access all the data, which means that with this one endpoint graph.microsoft.com, I can call multiple cloud services like Teams, Exchange, Azure AD and get the data that I want. there are different ways of connecting uh, to an endpoint or let's say connecting to a graph api one is rest apis and second one is sdks now microsoft has provided uh, the sdks for most programming languages microsoft has very well documented what programming languages are supported at the moment so these are the languages that you can see on the screen are supported it pretty much covers everything so uh in our tutorial we will mostly focus on powershell sdk and rest apis using some invoke methods now let's start by exploring different methods for connecting to microsoft graph now the first method i want to talk about is microsoft graph explorer so graph explorer is a web tool uh, designed by microsoft which you can use to uh test out your api request to microsoft graph so if you head over to developer.microsoft.com this url uh enus then graph graph explorer you should be able to open this website in this website uh you will first require to sign in with the admin account so i'll just uh, use an admin account here all right so if you can see uh this graph explorer application is uh, is asking for some consent in order to read my profile and maintain some uh, data 
so i'm going to accept that so right now it's kind of a user delegated permission since i have logged in this is the default uri that this tool gives me and uh, i have two options here i can use the version 1.0 and the beta version so if i just run this query which says 1.0 slash me i should get some uh, basic details about uh, my account for instance my mail uh, my display name my id now next i want to talk about what else we can do with this uh, graph explorer tool uh, so if i remove this uh, me uh, option then i get a list of other suggested uh, options like you know uh, i can choose from so let's say if i want to get uh, some user details right some other user details so let me try this okay users then forward slash now it is asking me for the user id i don't have any at the moment so let me just run this now i should get some error which says that either the signed in user does not have a sufficient privileges or the consent is not being done and it is uh, telling me to go to modify permissions tab to see uh, what minimal permissions are required we can also see the message insufficient privileges to complete this operation so let's click on modify permissions to see uh, what minimal uh, permissions is required i can see that here user dot read dot uh, read basic dot all permissions there i'm going to consent to it okay i'm going to accept that Remember that this is a user delegated permission still. Okay, now I have the consent. Uh, let's go to the request body. Okay, this is a get request. So let's run this query again. Now I can see that I'm able to get some details here. Right. Now, if I wanted to have a particular user information, what I can do is I can just copy this object ID and paste it here. Right. So in a way I was able to filter out the data in the URI. Next, let's say that uh, I'm interested in some of uh, the properties, but not all properties. For instance, I just want to get the user principal name of this uh, user. So what I can do, I can put a question mark here and then select and uh, just choose the user principal name, right? So, okay, user principal name and run query. So I can get any property that I want if I don't want to get all the properties here. So with this graph explorer, you get the idea that how do you connect to it? And if some permissions are required by a particular URI to get the data, we can go to the modify permissions tab and grant that specific permission. I do also uh, want to point out that when we, let's say consent to this, where exactly is this permission being applied? So let's look at that. Here I'm in my uh, Azure AD tenant. If I go to, if I go to the Entra ID and uh, go to enterprise applications, then I would see some applications here, right? Now, one of these applications is uh, Microsoft Graph Explorer here. So any permissions that you consenting on the Graph Explorer website, it's being applied here. So if I go to the permissions tab and go to user consent and I can see all the permissions that were consented by me. So uh, just now we put user.readbasic.all. If I click on this uh, users tab, I can see for which this, uh, was con this consent was done. So any permissions in Graph Explorer will come here. Another cool thing about Microsoft Graph is that it gives you this code snippets option 
and uh, with this code snippets option let's say that if you're building your application in any of these languages then it gives you the corresponding code for the url that you have run so for this particular url the corresponding code in c sharp would be where result await graphline.users.getsync similarly for powershell it will be get dash mg user and it changes uh, so let's say that uh, i had the id of this user right so if i run this the commandlet would change so this is also a good way to find the corresponding code of uh, the, the language that you are working in so as i earlier mentioned that microsoft provides the software development kit for all these applications that you can install and run the corresponding code to get your results so it's a pretty good feature in this toolkit so far we have talked about the get request in graph api let's talk about other requests so apart from get we have post put patch and delete post is usually used to create new resources in graph or uh, i'm sorry using graph in azure ad or in any other workload uh, put and patch are used to update a resource the difference between put and patch is that with put you will need to represent uh, the entire object uh, so let's say that if i'm trying to update display name then i might have to uh, write other details for that object or other properties for that object with patch i can just use the display name the only difference is that if i don't mention other properties in put it might update or make other properties as null so if you're interested in only updating a property of that object then use patch delete as the name suggests it will delete the resource so to give you an example we will just use post request here and we will try to create a new user so in the request body we just need to uh, send a json so we will copy this json it has some mandatory uh, mandatory fields like account enable display name and a password profile now if i run this i should get some error yeah so it says that insufficient privileges to complete this operation so in order to uh, make or in order to write something to the directory i need to have write permissions so if i go to the modify permissions tab uh, i can give user read write all if you remember we only gave user dot read dot all permission previously so i will consent to it okay so the scope is done uh, let's read on our query okay so i was able to create the account which says uh, for the user principal name new user ramanlodi.in so that's how you create a post request using graph explorer similarly you can use put patch delete in order to uh, delete the resource of your choice or update the resource of your choice for a detailed explanation of using these uh, post or any of these requests you can check microsoft official documentation but graph explorer is only for testing out uh, the uri so as long as you know the uris that you're trying to test or you're are trying to do let's say some production work also it should work the only catch is that you should be able to find the uri and the graph explorer does a fantastic job in order to help you with that because if i put a slash here then it gives me some options which i can use so apart from users if i put a slash again after 1.0 i do get some options uh, of the resources that i might want to interact so apart from users i can get the devices i can get other objects uh i can get the domains so it, it it's it it does a pretty good job in that regard now let's check out another example with where we will use patch to update a property now this account that we have created is a newly created account and the account enabled is true uh so you won't find this here by default in the response body but uh if i do a filter here or if i do a select here then i can actually call that property or get that property now you might question why all the properties are not visible here 
it's because of the performance issues. So Microsoft has deliberately or Graph deliberately shows only a few properties uh, in order to increase the performance of the API. And if you want to get other properties, then you will have to explicitly select them. So I'll do this. Okay, I'm getting some error code. Okay. Because we are trying to get the account enable property first. So right now it's true. Now let's just use patch to make it false. We will remove our select query and uh, remove the question mark as well. All right, so make it false and run. Now it was successfully ran. In order to check the current property, we can again do a question mark, which enables us to select two options, expand property and select. So we will select account enabled again, run the query and it got updated. So it's pretty straightforward and simple with the graph tool uh, to test out what you're trying to do. And uh, in the left panel, you will find what is majority of the, you know, uh, APIs or majority of the services that are supported with graph API. Uh, it doesn't list everything, but majority of the tasks you will find here. Now let's talk about PowerShell SDK for Microsoft Graph. Now Microsoft provides a module called Microsoft.Graph, which you can install using PowerShell and it will download every module that is there in this SDK. There are some prerequisites that uh, you will need to match, but if you're running Windows 11 or 10, you probably have met most of these. But it's a it's it's good to you know set the execution policy remote sign for this particular scenario. Now, if we want to install everything inside this module, then we can just simply copy and paste this commandlet right here. Also, to mention, if you want to install just the beta version, then the command the module name will be Microsoft dot graph dot beta. So. Let's start by installing everything that Microsoft.Graph has to offer. So I'll copy this commandlet. I have already opened my PowerShell as an administrator. I will just copy this and enter. Now it might take some time. So it's a good practice to install only the modules that you need instead of installing everything in Microsoft.Graph. For instance, I might not require the uh, you know, graph module for SharePoint. But if I'm running this commandlet, Microsoft.Graph, then it will install everything regardless. So I always make sure that I only install which is required because it saves time. Our Microsoft.Graph package got installed and it actually installed other multiple packages inside of it. So let's see what other modules or packages got installed. So we can run a commandlet called get dash installed modules and then name microsoft.graph and I want everything or like all modules that are starting with microsoft.graph. So I can use a star or asterisk here. Now I do see that there are multiple packages or modules got installed, but I see a few of them are missing still like microsoft.graph.user. So in order to check any user or any user details, I need that microsoft.graph.users. I have other modules like microsoft.graph.authentication, which will be helpful in order to authenticate with Microsoft Graph or Azure AD and then get a token. But uh, I'm interested in microsoft.graph.users for our examples for this tutorial. So what I'll do because I don't need everything yeah, like all of these modules right now. So I'll just uninstall it. Now what can I do is I can just uh, get all these in a variable. Let's say I will call it uh, graph modules. Then I will have everything in in our variable GMS. Then what I can do is I can loop through each module and then uninstall them one by one. 
so let's just do this get the name uh, so let's call it a graph module name and then assign it the value next what we will do is give it uninstall dash module and then name will be gmn and i will force it uh, we can also add something like write host in order to print or get information about what is being uninstalled so let's say uninstalling gmn uh, getting some error here let's run it once so we'll check what is the error okay i missed uh okay so it will loop through and uninstall everything in microsoft.graph package all right so it got uninstalled now let me just re-verify if we have anything that was not installed for some reason. Okay, so it seems like everything got uninstalled. Now I will just install what I need. I will start with Microsoft.Graph.Authentication uh, module. Okay, next I will install Microsoft.Graph.Users. The reason that I uninstalled everything is that first it did not have everything and I did not need it everything and uh, this will give you like uh, more opportunities to find the modules that you need. So let's say that you are writing a script right and uh, you want to know uh, that which modules you need to use. So I will explain that how you can find the module and the right permissions in order to use a particular commandlet. That's why uh, I have kept it like you know one more installing one module at a time so now that i have both of these modules we can clear the screen and we can start by uh, connecting to microsoft graph so we can run this command line uh, connect dash mg graph and uh, and press enter Now it should prompt me to enter my credentials. Now again, since it's a different application, uh, when you're using a Microsoft PowerShell SDK and trying to connect interactively, there is a, a application in Azure AD called Microsoft Graph command line tools exactly like microsoft graph explorer application and i can just accept it's uh, asking me uh, asking for some basic information to get so i will just accept it on behalf of my user account okay so as you can see connected to delegated access using the this is the application name okay so I'm connected to that. I'm using the delegated access, which means that uh, whatever I will be doing, it will be done by the application, but on behalf of the account being used. Okay. So we can start by uh, getting some user information. So I can run this command line get, get dash mg user and let's say all press enter. So I'm getting some insufficient privileges uh, error. It's 
forbidden and i will explain why now the reason i'm getting uh, insufficient privileges is because when connecting to microsoft graph interactively using delegated access i need to define some scopes here okay so let me clear this screen and disconnect the graph so i can use disconnect dash mg graph okay i'm disconnected now let's connect again and this time we will use something called scopes okay and uh, here i will write user dot read dot all now this scope is actually a permission that will come when you will like authenticate and it will ask you to grant the consent so similarly this particular permission will be applied on that application com graph command line tools application i will show you that so for now let's just press enter okay okay see now it is asking to uh, consent or accept the permission it says read all users profile and maintain uh, data uh, you don't want to click on consent of behalf of your organization because then uh, admin users will not get this consent or you can do that there are ways where you can define uh, you know you can add users to this application and then uh, the users which are added only those can you know uh, send send you the uh, send you the uh, uh, permission so now it is giving me the consent prompt where i need to accept that this application will read all users profile on behalf of my account i will just click on accept okay now if i read uh, if i uh, use this command let get dash mg user and then uh, use all parameter then oh sorry what went wrong okay i type in the wrong command let get dash mg user all okay now if you can see i'm getting all the users here right let's head back to our azure ad and we will check a few details there okay so here i'm under enterprise applications let's search for that uh, application uh, microsoft graph command line tools under permissions i should be able to see those permissions i have given user consent so i can see that uh, directly dot uh, read dot all uh, so i have used different accounts with this so you might see like two users three users there but overall i uh, if i just look at the user dot read dot all this one right so i have given this permission and i can see this user as well who gave consent or who accepted the prompt okay next i want to talk about how to find the permission or the module so let's say that you already know which command let you want to run so for instance i needed to run get dash mg user i can search for the command let go to microsoft's website and here it will let me know which module this command let or this function is a part of and it will also let me know the permissions that are required to run so uh, on a delegated permission i can just use uh, user dot read this is the least uh, permission least privileged permission and uh, for application this is user dot read dot all so this this is basically when you will uh, register your own application and let's say you are trying to give 
uh, you know you're you're trying to use application permissions or a delegated permission so we will will come to that later uh, i'll explain how do you can register your app and use graph api in order to connect and use those permissions to get the data but here you will get an idea like what what module i need this is the module that i will need in order to run this commandlet and what permissions or scopes i will be required in order to get some data okay so in this examples also you can see that they have used user dot read dot all permission now if you are following along i explained that microsoft uh, graph does not give you all the properties about a resource or an object because it wants to focus on a uh, performance let's say that you have tens and thousands of resources and if it gets you all the user properties or object properties then uh, there will be it will take some time for that matter so let's let's see how we can use the sdk in order to filter uh, things out or get uh, the property that you need i will clear my screen and let's say that uh, why why not let's uh, pick the id of the user first right so let's say that uh, i will blake id okay i will get this id okay now i have the id i want to get the user details using this id so i will use get dash mg user then i can uh, type in the parameter user id and give it a value and press enter okay it's giving me basic details i want to explore or get more details i can use uh, i can use format list and i should get more details here now some uh, some of these settings are let's say it's uh, microsoft.graph. whatever whatever these settings uh, requires you to expand that property we'll get to that but if you see overall here uh, i'm not getting account enabled i'm not getting some other uh properties like assigned plans okay so how how we can get that let's let's dive into it right so with graph you need to explicitly uh provide the information about the property that you are trying to access so let's say i'm trying to access uh, I, I want to get account enabled i want to get uh, assigned licenses okay then i want to select them also okay all right so now i'm getting these details where i uh, i'm able to get account enabled and assigned licenses now if you compare this with uh, what it was giving us as a default output uh, these properties are not there okay finding the powershell commandlet in microsoft graph is pretty straightforward you can always use the graph explorer or you can utilize this microsoft powershell 1.0 documentation or the beta documentation uh, i can just find the commandlet that i need from here in the left panel you will find the modules under those modules there will be some commandlets if i just click on this drop down i can find the commandlets then once i have the commandlet i can already see like what it does in the overview what modules i need to install and what permissions i will need in order to run this commandlet there's another way let's say that i know the commandlet name as in the full name i can just run this uh, commandlet here find dash mg graph command and give the parameter command type in my commandlet and press enter it will give me all the information that i need what you are it's connecting to uh, what kind of permissions it requires from uh, least privileged to most privileged is in ascending order similarly if i know the module let's say then i can find out uh, what all commandlets i have in my module so uh, what i can do i can use this powershell inbuilt command get dash command I can use module, give the module name. Say users. Okay. See, uh, this much commandlets or functions I have under Microsoft.draft.users. And if you don't want to utilize uh, 
a module parameter you can always use regex so let's say that i am already interested in particular command let's see, starting with the get dash uh, mg uh, users then put asterisk here now see i have all the functions which is starting with get dash mg user next let's talk about filter capabilities in microsoft graph Microsoft has two type of filter. One is a default filter and another one is an advanced filter. Microsoft uh, keeps basic filter and advanced filter in separate stores. Basically, it uses indexing in order to get you the result you want. So both of these filters have their separate stores and have their independent indexing. This is being done by Microsoft in order to increase the performance with filter capabilities. So when using default filter, you might or you will not be able to uh, filter all the uh, properties with all the uh, operators that you want. Some operators and some uh, properties only work with advanced filter. We will talk more about advanced filter capabilities later in the video. But let's, let's first go through the default or the basic filter capabilities Microsoft Graph offers. So Microsoft Graph supports OData query. So OData is open data protocol. Uh, using open data protocol, developers make REST API engines. And what it does is that it enables the REST API engines to be queried using HTTP method using the URLs. So OData provides that functionality here. Okay, so we will go through some of these examples here, you can see there are operators that we can use. They are equality operators, equals, not equals, right? In has, they are relational, lambda. Uh, so we will, I will try to uh, give you more examples with that. But since this article covers everything, my agenda will be to make you understand what is hidden in this article or give you a walkthrough of this article. Now, the important part that we will go through is the equal not equals operator and not logical operator. Then we will also go through any or all lambda operators. I will explain why do we need this. And in our examples, you will find most of these uh, like a combination of these operators. Okay, not everything, but most of this I will try to cover. Start by very basic filter. So we will just use user principal name in order to get the user okay i'll use get dash mg user then we will apply a filter the syntax uh, we will use the typical syntax for odata protocol uh, that that will become more comp complex with the advanced filter capabilities but do not worry i'm here to explain it for you so let's just say that i am looking for a user principal name which is, uh, let's say, MG graph admin, uh, it's not MG graph admin, it's graph admin at raman.tk, enter. Syntax error, let's see what the error is. So I use filter user princip principal name, Okay, so with the, be careful with this graph. It, it doesn't support your typical filter with PowerShell uh, like traditionally we have been using equals operator. Remove the dash before the equal, okay? So I can see that now I have uh, the graph admin account here, right? So since uh, see with mg uh, get dash mg user command let, what happens is it gives us only the option to user ID. So if I don't know the user ID, how do I, uh, you know, get the user? So using filter, we can get that. Let's move on to a more complex type of filter using any operator. So any operator is basically applies a true or false, uh, you know, it returns true or false, uh, whether or not a condition will be matched. So let's say that we have a collection under this collection, there are some property. Okay. And if that sub property matches 
the value here then it will be true otherwise it will be false for true at least one property has to match the value we have defined here in value to match so uh, let's understand this uh, particular uh, http method here for filter collection is a property okay like assigned licenses okay property colon property this is an alias okay for uh, the element that is under the collection i will explain that with the example okay for now just uh, keep it as like an alias for collection element okay so property could be like sku id under assigned licenses so assigned licenses was a collection okay then under that we there could be like uh, multiple assigned licenses okay so consider multiple licenses as the element and this property under uh, colon property is representing that element so property under it could be any sub property under that collection okay it could be sku id or something else whichever is available and value to match is just like value to match it could be a it needs to be a value here so uh, i'll give you an example now about this so let's say that uh, uh, just run let's run get dash mg user we'll pick up a user from there okay let me pick blake lively and uh, check the licenses okay so get dash mg user then user id then let's say property uh, assigned licenses select assigned licenses okay uh, let me do a format list here I can see assigned licenses okay I can see the SKU ID for these let's try to expand this and see if it give us any different results so I will use expand property switch here okay select expand property and assigned licenses okay now after expanding this particular collection okay i have disabled plans and i have sku id so consider if i if, if i just compare this so now collection is our assigned licenses collection okay under that the property colon property will be the alias or which will hold the current element so during the iteration or iteration let's say this will be evaluated first so property under uh, colon property will be represented uh, will represent this particular element then this particular element after that this particular element so during the iteration it will represent these elements under the collection okay now sub property is basically the sku id which we will be using and then there will be a value to match okay now let's say that i have this all this information now it is giving me some uh, http method that i can use using graph explorer i can also use powershell and uh, make our own uh, commandlet here okay so before this uh, let's try to run this and then we will also move to the graph explorer also for some examples okay i will paste this commandlet now it's important to understand what's going on here okay assigned licenses is my collection i'm using any operator which is just saying that any uh, uh, any sku id that matches this okay return that value to the output so uh, let's say that uh, I'm interested in this SKU ID, this license here. What I can do is I can just uh, replace this value and press enter. So I am getting all the users who have this particular license assigned, uh, this particular license assigned. 
now i can also see like what what this license is okay this is just an idea i don't know what it is so i can use this commandlet get get dash mg subscribed sku okay now do remember that this will require another module to be installed i have it installed previously so uh, if you if you want to find out i can just run find dash mg graph command and then it will tell it will it should tell me more information like what module i need to install and what uh, permission that it will uh, it will require i can do a format list and uh, i should get some more information like what permissions i need okay in order to run this command it so just it was just an fyi uh, just to give you that information that i have already installed that command let and given the rightful permission so let me run this okay now okay uh, let's since the font size is a lit a little bigger uh, just wanted to make sure that you see everything clearly uh, okay let's do one thing i'll do a format list here also okay and uh, let's see just i'm just interested in sku part number and sku id in fact i think this is the one that uh, that we used we can just quickly press the up arrow key and find out f3 uh, okay it was f3 f8 okay let's do one thing uh, we will just uh, select what we need so i'm interested in sku id and i'm interested in sku part number all right okay let's compare so it's starting with f ending with d starting with f ending with d okay so this was the flow free license okay and it was assigned to three users as we saw we can just check it again so these three users has this have this flow free license okay hope that uh, i was able to explain how this any operator works okay let's try more examples and uh, also try some advanced query capabilities okay now let me open this advanced query capabilities uh, article by microsoft now since i in the beginning of this filter uh, part i told you that uh, microsoft keeps a separate store for advanced uh, advanced query capabilities uh, basically those objects uh, those filter queries for that it uses a separate index okay uh, if you read this uh, the microsoft graph query engine uses index to store full store to fully query request to add to support for additional query capabilities on some properties those properties might be indexed in a separate store okay now it also tells that uh it has added advanced query capabilities for some operators like not not equals ends with and there are like some basically directory objects that will support all these operators now one important part is that whenever we are using advanced query filter capabilities there there are two things that we need to define one is consistency level will be equals to eventual and we need to use the count parameter also okay so basically we need to use count variable in our powershell okay consistency eventual uh, it just increases the performance of the graph api okay so whenever just make sure that whenever you are using advanced filter capabilities then you need to define these two things okay now let's try uh, some uh, advanced query you know filter capabilities so what i want to do is i want to find out all the users that don't have a license assigned okay first i want to do this with graph explorer so i will use this example here now if you see that uh, let me zoom it out a bit all right so get all users without assigned licenses so this count equals 0 is a advanced query and it's well documented in advanced query capabilities documentation uh, let's go to graph and uh, try to run this query here okay users then slash uh, let me just copy paste that here okay so i'm going to use question mark filter true 
so paste make sure it is correct uh, we don't need that slash here so i'm going to remove this okay uh, notice when i try to run this query it will give me an error okay let's check what is the error now it is saying uh, first is saying insufficient privileges so let me just modify the permission once maybe i logged in with a different account here so okay i just give directory dot read dot all okay permission is there let's try to run it again now if you see it says bad request okay it is saying expect simple uh, name value query but observe property assigned licenses of type of complex type assigned license so in english it's trying to say that you are trying to use advanced query filter capabilities now if you remember i told you that we need to use consistency eventual also okay apart from count so i cannot define consistency eventual here what i'll do is i will add a key and i will say consist consistency level and i will say here eventual okay let's run it now uh, add it and then run it okay now if you can see it is giving me all the users who don't have a license okay now let's say that i want to run this in powershell also right i can go to code snippets go to powershell and then i get my commandlet here let me copy it paste this thing in powershell run it i have all the users which don't have a license assigned now if you see there is a backtick before count variable why backtick is there because it is required in o data protocol uh, the reason is that if i if we don't include a backtick before count variable then the count is passed as a variable to graph api and graph api is expecting a string for this okay graph api don't want this as a variable okay so let's say that i remove the backtick here the moment i remove it you see that the color changed which means there is some issue i run it i get a syntax error so we want to pass this as a string so i will use just backtick here and run it so that's how you use a advanced query okay now i want to go to the advanced query capabilities uh, by the way uh, there are multiple examples here with multiple operators and uh, properties feel free to try them at your own sweet time okay let's get uh, to the important stuff under advanced query capabilities okay there are few things you will need to uh, uh, remember is that these operators always support uh, advanced query okay and it doesn't mean that they will work with every other uh, property right it it's not like that they will work with the properties that is documented okay so uh <clears throat> let's scroll down and uh, there is a uh, table here which says that uh, the green tick right this is this operator works by default so whenever you see this this green tick here like this uh, display name so this works by default a circle uh, a white circle with a green tick only works without advanced query parameters okay we don't want to have advanced query parameters here a green circle with a white tick inside it it requires advanced query parameters which means that i will have to use consistency eventual and count okay now if you see this is a query query string and i have to pass consistency eventual as a header whenever i'm using a http method okay <clears throat> now 
uh, we don't want all that like application properties and everything and device properties. Obviously, you can explore that. But this tutorial is mostly around the user properties. I will scroll down to the bottom and explain a few things for you. Under user properties, I can see which property works with which operator and whether it supports a default or it supports advanced query. Now account enabled, uh, it works by default. We also saw or uh, ran if you are following along user principal name, it worked, it worked by default. Uh, we ran assigned licenses. If you remember this one, whether, you know, uh, uh, the, all the users with a particular SKU ID, this also works by default. Now, if you don't remember, we ran this command, we try to find out all users that have this particular SKU ID or license. So it gave us the result without the advanced query. So that's how it worked. Now, if I scroll it to the top, I can see that there are some operators which works only with advanced query. Now let's go to the same example. Okay. This, uh, I want to use this commandlet to find out all the users that don't have this particular SKU ID, right? Now, in order to use the not, right, what can I, what I can do is I can just use not here, put braces so that it evaluates all this thing as a not. Okay. And I will have to put at the end another braces. Okay. Now what it will do uh, now you, you might already know since I have not, uh, typed consistency and count variable, this will give me some error, right? Okay. So not is not so because consistency eventual header is missing, right? So we will clear the screen. Let's press up arrow key. I will use consistency eventual and run it again. Yes, I am again getting an error. Why? Because a parameter is missing. You know what that parameter is? the count variable enter and here I have the result all the users who don't have a flow free license. So that's how the advanced uh, capabilities work. That's how you can utilize all these information given by Microsoft in order to run your advanced queries. Uh, one more thing I want to point out is that any property that works with equal uh, parameter, right? Any property that works with equal parameters works with not equals parameter also. Okay. It was written somewhere in the document. I, uh, I forgot where it was, but you will have to uh, read this article uh, because see, if I cover everything, then the, uh, 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 tutorial will be too long, right? So please feel free to check this article out. I have told you how to utilize this, how to use it. And, uh, please go ahead and do that. Uh, now I will move on to our next topic.